Yo, what is going on my dudes? Welcome to another RuneScape news coverage video. For this video, we're going to talk about continuous Fortic auto-attacking and its removal from the game, as well as some ninja fixes we can expect with next week's update. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. Let's go. Alright guys, continuous Fortic auto-attacking is going to be removed on Monday, next week's update which is a patch week, no major game updates that Monday, but we will see the removal of C4 TAA. Now, I'm not going to get into the intricacies of it. I'll have it linked down below the forum post as well as a Reddit post where both Mod Shiny and Pi go into greater detail, but I'll talk about essentially what is the bug that they've recognized and their removal of it, how that all works. So basically, in continuous 4-tick auto-attacking, the bug that was happening is your dual wield abilities were setting your auto-attack delay backwards, which would allow staff-based auto-attacks to go off every 4-ticks rather than their intended 6. So they've recognized that as the bug and have corrected that specifically. And that will be going live on Monday. So what it's doing is it's going to prevent your auto-attack delay from going backwards and thus preventing staff auto attacks from going off at a faster rate than intended. If you're curious about why they're removing continuous for ticking, in short, it's a byproduct of a bug that was causing an imbalance in the combat system. When effectively used, the damage per minute was increased significantly. Although keep in mind, this is only continuous for tick auto attacking. They are not removing regular for ticking at all because they say that four ticking in its regular conventional way does not manipulate auto attack delays and therefore is not considered a bug therefore they're going to keep it in the game as is so if you're somebody who four ticks normally and doesn't you know continuous four tick this update should not affect you at all this is just for people who continuous four tick as like i said they recognize what the bug is and have corrected it so those auto attacks do not fire faster than intended so again, the links to the forum post and the Reddit, if you want to get more into the intricacies of it, will be down in the description below, but just so you know the bare bones of it, hopefully in such a way that it was easy for you to follow along. With that out of the way, we're actually going to shift gears, guys. We're going to be talking about some stuff that Mod Shani has shown off on the Friday live stream, things that we can expect with Monday's update. First off, we have a graphical update to the Lodestones. So you'll see on screen, I'll have the various different lodestones showing of the ones who showed off with this update. All of them will be changed, however, but they do have a new graphical change. Now, this was done, if you're curious, on the tap time of one of the graphic developers. So this was his own personal project that he wanted to do on his own time, just to make that clear. But they do look cool. I understand it's not particularly a necessary update, but it was done on the... You know, developers tap time, so those are those kind of things where they get to choose whatever they want to develop, and he just so happened to want to visually update the lodestones. So, nothing major, but still, let me know what you guys think about them. They look pretty cool, in my opinion. But yeah, moving on. The lighting within the Mauritania Slayer Tower has been brightened up pretty significantly. So, this is actually how it looks like, or what it will look like on Monday. You can see it's much more brighter than previous. I'll show on quickly what it looks like in the current build. It's pretty dark, and I guess people have voiced concerns about making it brighter. So it is brighter. It still gives the feel of a gloomy, you know, tower overrun by monsters, but not nearly as dark. So it should be easier to see a lot of things when you're in the Mortania Slayer Tower. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Let me know what you guys think about it. Nothing particularly game-changing or anything in my personal opinion, but... If people wanted that and it's going to help people get their drops easier or see their items or be able to click, whatever the case may be, then I'm all for it. Moving on, we got the ability to purchase the Waterfall Fishing Teleports from the Waterfall Fishing Shop in Prif Dennis for 300 Crystal Urchin Points, which they have showed off previously or at the beginning of the month rather, I think. So that will be coming with Monday as well. Moving on, we have the ability to configure the rifts with Divination. I have talked about this previously on the channel, but basically 
you'll have a right click option that will allow you to configure and you can choose to configure it to one of the three different conversion methods. Either you want to convert it straight to energies or if you want to convert only your memories or you want to do the enhanced memory method. Once you configure that, it will now set your left click option to whatever you configured. So it'll memorize that and you just have to left click on the rift whenever you want to use that method which is pretty cool. It'll help make a little more convenience when doing divination overall. So let me know what you think of that update. Moving on, we have the Tears of Gothic's improvements. Those of you who happen to be playing old school probably seen this with your Tears of Gothic's minigame. Pretty similar in fashion. Basically, the tier locations will not move around as frequently. They have a certain amount of time that they're going to stick around for, so they're not going to be as sporadic and the animations have been made much smoother and way more responsive. So if you want to shift to another location, you shouldn't have much problem with that. It should be very responsive, very smooth, and make it an overall much more enjoyable mini game and not so much stress and frustration inducing, hopefully. Anyways, yeah, that's also coming on Monday, which I'm really excited for. Really good update. After all these years, glad to see it finally comes to the game. And finally, we have a backlog poll coming out next week. And this will show us a bunch of new things that we can vote for if we want them to come in the game or we want the priorities of these things to be bumped up for Jagus to start working on. Some of these things are pretty interesting. You can see on screen if you want to check them out. Some of them even include removing 4-tick auto-attacking and replacing it with a much more gameplay-focused method if that is something you want to do. Like I said, they're removing continuous 4-ticking but they're also going to give us the chance to vote on whether or not we want to remove Fort Seeking altogether. And obviously, I think if they do decide to do that, they would replace it with a more hands-on actual gameplay mechanic. At the same time, they remove it and not remove it beforehand and leave us with nothing until the update comes out. I don't know yet. That's yet to be seen. But at least you can vote on those things and voice your opinion next week. Anyways, that pretty much wraps it up for what we got going on over here. Again, don't forget to check out those links for the continuous forward sticking if you are curious about the intricacies of it. I will have it linked down in the description. And let me know what you guys think about these updates coming up on Monday. Like I said, everything discussed here is planned for Monday and it is a patch week. There is no major game update on Monday. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about all of these things down in the comments. And with that, I will wrap up the video. If you have enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date on all things RuneScape related, then hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. I am out. Peace.